Enough talking already. I'm going to show you today how I make a low volume pieced backing. Now you can use scrap or crumbs, whatever you have on hand. The first thing you have to do is decide what's low volume and what's not for you and your quilts. Typically a low volume fabric is very subtle. Now, a lot of times there is a design on a low volume fabric. The color in it is so subtle that it's hard to see maybe. This one is a good example of a low volume fabric. That green is very pale and very light with a white background. Would you consider this one low volume? I consider anything with a white background, cream background, very, very light background, a low volume fabric, even if it has red in it, like this. What I would do at this point, I have a lot of this done already, but I would lay this like that and I walk away to see if it sort of blends. And it does really. You have this right here has the red in it as well. And there is spots of red everywhere or pink, but it's not overwhelming. That's what I wanted to stress. You may think when you look at this that it's not low volume. Change the way you think about it. A pieced backing actually gives you the perfect opportunity to sign your quilt. A lot of quilters sign their quilts with labels or they use quilt markers made specifically for signing quilts. Now for my label, I embroidered a secret message that I've covered up with painter's tape. The secret within my label has to do with my two year anniversary on YouTube coming up. So I'm not gonna spill the beans. For this quilt backing, I'm going to incorporate my embroidered label right here. I could literally put it anywhere, but I figure right here is good. So I'm gonna sew these two pieces together and then trim that off. I'll show you how we piece everything else. When I first start this project, I grab pieces and bits out of my bin and I sew them together. Now I do have a finished size in mind, but until I get to this point, I really don't worry about that. I just put fabrics together. So this is what I've ended up with are these big, huge blocks. So I measure to see at this point how much more I'm going to need. I trim off all the excess like this right here, put everything up on my design board, measure and see what more I need. Since this backing has so many different seams in it, pick a side, any side, and stick to it. And I don't think we're gonna do this side right here. Oh my word, I just love it. Make sure that everything is trimmed. This side right here, one side is a little bit higher going all the way down. So I will fix that by trimming it to meet this edge right So here. here's the problem I'm up against right now in this process. I need approximately 60 or more inches across this way and 60 up and down. With this sewn together here and this piece right here, I'm going to be just under 60 inches. So not only do I need to add about two and a half to three inches right here to match these two pieces up so they can be sewn together, I'm going to find a piece of fabric to go straight down the center here of these two pieces. So that way it's not on the end and it's a skinny piece on an end part. It's in the middle somewhere. This fabric is so darling. It has little whales and fish on it and it says, I whale always love you. Have the words running up and then all I would need would be a little bit more. So that's probably what I'm gonna do. And since I have a chunk of this, I am going to fussy cut those words. The first thing I do to prepare the fabric is to give it a good hot press. I think I'm actually going to fussy cut three of the rows of the words. After adding this piece right here, the one on the bottom, next we'll connect these two pieces and then I'll check my measurement. So this is what 
we have so far. Remember we needed 60 down and 60 across. So I sewed all this together, sold that down the middle, that little piece down there, trimmed everything up. I had this little piece right here where I put that secret message down there, right? Remember that? <laughs> I had that piece to connect to. If my measurements are correct, I'm going to need 10 more inches added on to this. So we'll see how it all turns out because I am running out of low volume fabric. <laughs> Truth time, how many of you have ever walked out the door and went to the grocery store or to run in any errand at all and you look like this down the front and never even noticed it? Let me know down in the comments. I can't even count how many times that's happened to me. As you can see, I ran out of felt. So I can't put this up there to show you until it's connected and then I put it up, then you'll be able to see it. I did need about 10 more inches and this is it right here. Remember that really cute snail fabric that had red in it at the beginning? Right here, I'm gonna put that one in. After this project, I think I'm totally tapped out of low volume fabric. Time to go shopping, I guess. <laughs> Let me sew this on, get everything set up, and I'll show you the end result. <laughs> this backing right here was just as much fun to make as the front of this quilt was. But you'll have to wait and see in February what my big surprise is. It's so big, you definitely don't want to miss it. If you don't want to miss that video in February, be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you know when I upload that video. You'll only have a small time frame to watch it and react. You definitely want in on that. Trust me. I know, now I'm teasing. <laughs> Until next time on the Sewing Channel, take care.